A very warm welcome back to Globetrotting. Subscribe if you haven't already. Boeing 787s have been grounded around the world. Not all, but certainly some. So why are airlines being forced to park this long-haul jet, given its importance in daily flying? Well, since the 787 entered service, Rolls-Royce-powered model versions have struggled with reliability woes, which have therefore affected the series' performance for over a decade. In the 2010s, concerns related to blade cracking and corrosion-related fatigue impacting the blades were found in an ANA 787 in the early stages of 2016, with repairs being initiated. However, nowadays, the global supply chain crisis has affected engine manufacturers right around the world, notably Rolls-Royce's Trent 1000 engines, which impacted 787 customers. Rolls-Royce has stated that it continues to have problems acquiring the raw materials required to produce parts for the Trent 1000 engines, and as a result, the number of new engines produced has significantly reduced in number, which then goes on to affect the output rate. Therefore, Boeing requires the new engines to build the 787s to get them in the skies, and if this isn't taking place, well then your output is just not going to be where it needs to be. However, airlines with the 787 in their fleet with these engines are also feeling the effects, as the repairs for in-service planes are significantly delayed due to a lack of spare parts and a hefty build-up for engines requiring maintenance. Vietnam Airlines stated that maintenance for the 787 was blown out by over a month at a time, which meant re-entry into service was a challenge and threw out operations and finances. One airline currently impacted by those 787 groundings and engine woes is Air New Zealand, the flag carrier of New Zealand. The company has been a long-time operator of the 787 Dreamliner. It's seen in locations right around the world. However, the airline's time with this aircraft has been anything but smooth, with groundings occurring during the mid to late 2010s, as well as the early 2020s and now into 2025, where in fresh updates in recent months, the airline confirmed that the number of Dreamliners on the ground will actually grow this year, with pressures simply not expected to ease. Therefore, Air New Zealand is forecasting an increase in the number of planes on the ground in the second half of 2025, with units parked ranging from 10 to 11. This figure is an increase on the 7 to 8 planes grounded across the first half of 2025, and even more of a significant rise from the 5 to 6 in the second half of last year. So, Air New Zealand has also been forced to change its global route network, specifically focusing on markets served by the 787. Given the restricted capacity, it doesn't make sense to continue to some international markets. Whether that is Seoul or Chicago, we have seen routes axed. It's an unfortunate turn of events, but one that is absolutely necessary to ensure that this is a company that can solidify itself for the future. On the other hand, British Airways will experience also persistent groundings of its 787 fleet throughout 2025. According to fresh comments from the airline, the company's chief Chief Planning and Strategy Officer recently spoke at Roots America. This is a 2025 edition conference, and he discussed the impact that would be felt throughout the upcoming year. Moreover, this was also highlighted by Aviation Week, but the airline has long been battling groundings for its 787 series, which has really become the new norm for the UK-based flag carrier. Even if it is only a handful of units, it is something they are definitely feeling the effects of. Fleet data indicated in March that they had four planes that were out of service. And again, while this is only four and could be a lot worse, it is still enough units to cause some kind of disruption to their network. One of their struggles more so is not that four units are necessarily pulled from service, but it is the lack of certainty on when engine complications will conclude and they can get these planes back in the skies. If you, say, have a washing machine at your home not working and you're told it will be fixed in a week and a half, you can plan for that week and a half with the knowledge that in two weeks you'll be using it. But if you've got a washing machine that's broken, you're told it'll be fixed in a week and a half and then three weeks later it's not. You can see how that can throw some potential hiccups and add that on a scale of an airline and not washing clothes. You can certainly see how four units definitely would cause some kind of disruption. There is generally a lack of certainty on when aircraft engines will be inspected, when spare parts will arrive and how long maintenance periods will continue. The unknown remains unoptimal and plays a role in the airline's 
short to medium term network planning and in generally determining where it has available capacity and where it's able to deploy this. While British Airways does hope things will improve soon, it still finds scheduling and planning for aircraft reactivation to be difficult when it is receiving mixed messages from suppliers and other key parties. To cope with the 787 groundings, British Airways has made its schedule leaner and more capable of dealing with the lack of capacity in recent years. This is expected to continue throughout 2025 with several changes announced at the end of 2024 as part of ongoing network optimization efforts and to prepare for the grounding of 787 aircraft. International markets were cut, albeit on a temporary basis. I'm keen to hear your take on the 787. There's been a lot of challenges from top to bottom with this plane across the last 10 years and now in 2025 we're reaching a point where obviously the impact is worse on some airlines, other companies are far more outspoken, but it is a very real consideration when examining airlines' financial results. I hate always bringing it up, but it is tough to ignore. On every occasion that these aforementioned airlines publish their financial results, typically at the top is their results are based on a challenging operating environment, and that is really led by an inability to have all their planes in the skies. That would be the best case scenario. That would be what you would expect, your planes actively flying, and if they can't, well, they're going to throw curve balls left, right, and center. Thank you very much for tuning into this video here on Globetrotting. I appreciate the support. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis right back here on Globetrotting.